Uh, I'm going to talk about eyes, and I have no disclosures. Um, normally, when we do a left atrial appendix closure, we will have a TOE probe placed in the esophagus, which is a perfect position for imaging the left atrial appendage. You have a huge probe, large pipe for data transfer, and um, that explains why you can do 3D imaging, you can do all um, Doppler interrogation of the appendage. Uh, I'm going to talk about how we can do it differently, how we can do it with ice, where we have a much smaller probe, and the only um, reason for doing it is that we can do it under local. In Scandinavia, patients will not tolerate a TOE probe under local anesthesia, and uh, we therefore need to do it with an ice probe. And I'm going to go through the different views you can try and get uh, if you want to see the left atrial appendix. And I'll start with um, the view from the right atrium. And uh, here we have the left atrial appendage, uh, the left upper palmy vein, and uh, here's the ice probe coming in from the inferior vena cava. And you can see this is a pretty long distance from the atrial septum to the left atrial appendage. And that's why this is not a particularly good way of imaging the left atrial appendage. And the, on a good day, you'll get images like this, where you can see the left atrial appendage, you can see the left upper palmy vein. Um, but this is not good enough for um, implantation of a device. Another suggestion has been the coronary sinus. It's a really ingenious way of doing it because there's a very close relationship between the coronary sinus and the left atrial appendage. You can see here on a reconstruction, you know, sometimes it's a bit narrow and near, near, the, append near the appendage. But um, at the entry, it's quite big, the coronary sinus. It's not difficult to see on ice. Uh, here's an image where you can see the coronary sinus. Uh, you can see flow. And you can get the probe in there. It's not that easy, but you can get the probe into the coronary sinus. Uh, we have not had very good success with this because um, I think one of the reasons why it's difficult is because uh, the angle of insonation is quite different from what you're used to. If you look at the slide, you can see that if you go into the coronary sinus, you will have this angle on the left atrial appendage. Whereas you normally, with a TOE probe, will be looking like this. And your, um, the, left, uh, the circumflex will not be in the view of insonation if you look from the coronary sinus. So this is the view that you're used to, where you have the circumflex as a marker of where you are. And if you do um, coronary sinus imaging, you get this kind of imaging. Very nice image of the left atrial appendix, but you don't have the circumflex, and it's quite different from what you're used to. So uh, another way of doing it is, is to go into the palmy artery. There's a very close relationship between the uh, palmy artery and um, the left atrial appendix. And one of the first times when this method was used, uh, ice and the implantation of uh, a device in the appendix, it was done at Oxford and they did this procedure. Uh, they went onto the palmy artery and imaged the left atrial appendix. So um, this is how you do it. You can do this, you don't need fluoro to do that. Once you're in the, the right atrium, you can easily manipulate through the tricuspid valve into the palmy artery. And if you look into the right side, you'll have this beautiful image that I, I love to show. This is what we call money in the street. You know, you have aorta, uh, superior vena cava, right upper palmy vein. And if you look into the other side, you will have um, the uh, descending aorta, um, left upper palmy vein, and then you know that the left atrial appendix will be in this area. So this is what it looks like on ice. Uh, you have the descending aorta, left upper palmy vein, and here you have the left atrial appendage. Uh, you can optimize this image you know, by uh, turning the probe a bit, and you can get an image like this. Now, you're seeing the left atrial appendage upside down, but you will be able to see the circumflex artery. Um, you can see the disadvantage of this is that the left atrial appendage is moving a lot, and you are in the palmy artery, and that's also moving. So you always get very busy images. Uh, here's another example with somebody in sinus rhythm, where you can see nice pictures of the circumflex, but it's all moving very much, so it's a bit difficult to, um, 
to orientate yourself because you're not looking in the same position all the time. But we started out doing left atrial appendage implantation this way. And um, here you can see with the collar on it. Um, yeah, one of the disadvantages is also that the minute that you put the device in, there's shattering of the entry into the appendix. So uh, the area that you really want to see is suddenly in shadows from the device. So that's another disadvantage of using the right palm artery or the left palm artery for imaging the left atrial appendix. So we have completely um, adopted the method of going across the septum and imaging the left atrial appendix from the left side. And, um, and so it means that we can help with the left uh, transeptal puncture with the eyes probe. And then we can either do one puncture or two punctures. We started out using two punctures, but now we manage with one. We just go through one hole. There was a bit of a discussion as to whether it's worse to have two small holes or one bigger hole. We think one bigger hole is fine. So um, that's how we normally do it. You know, we start out helping out the, with the transeptal puncture, looking up to the uh, SVC. And um, so this is what you see, the superior, uh, the superior vena cava, right palm artery, uh, left atrium. And um, then uh, the device, you know, just before you get the jump into the left, uh, into this uh, atrial septum, you'll be seeing something like this. And you want to puncture this point. You want to be low in the atrial septum. But what normally happens is that the minute the needle, needle drops, you'll be in the upper part of the septum. So you need to guide the needle into the inferior part. And uh, that's where ICE has a huge advantage, I think, because that's the area where TOE actually find it's very difficult to get those images because of the positioning of the esophagus. So if we want to see the inferior part of the atrial septum, we can get images like this which is actually better than what you see on TOE, even though the image quality as such is probably not superior. But you have the coronary sinus, you have this part of the atrial septum beautifully imaged. <clears throat> and here you can see this is what we want to do. We want to puncture at the lower part of the atrial septum, this part, and this is what we are seeing here. So that's the needle just about to go across the inferior part of the um, atrial septum. Then also there's the anterior-posterior position uh, on the atrial septum, and that's where we use this view. So um, this is the atrial septum, and we want to puncture in the posterior part. So you need to be able to get an image like this in order to guide that part of the procedure. So here we want to be at, at the posterior end of the septum. So just going through the procedure, here's the needle in the superior vena cava. Um, we drop down onto the septum. We make sure that it's not too anterior, but we're in the middle of the septum. Then we go across, and we get the sheath across the septum. So you need two images of the septum, longitudinal and or the vertical view, and then um, 45, 90 degree view of the septum. And then we pass the atrial septum with the device. So we go, we take the probe and cross and put it in the left upper palm vein. If you hook your device in the left upper palm vein, it means that the probe will be moving with the heart. So you get much more stable imaging, uh, unlike the ones from the palm artery. So you will be looking like this, which means that your images will be like this. And uh, here we are in the left upper palm vein. This is the circumflex. And um, here you see the pigtail in, a, in the left appendage um, in atrial fibrillation. And here's the device. And at this juncture, we will take the probe back into the atrium so we can have a better look at the vein to see whether there's obstruction, whether we are happy with the positioning of the device. Um, and then we can move around and get all the different angles and see whether we are happy with the positioning of the disc and the tire. Um, and we can also see the uh, relation to the mitral valve 
here's another device. And here, here you see one problem, you know, it's not completely covered. It was decided that this was good enough. And um, we can have images where you see here's a very broad base um, atrial appendage. And um, in order to fill that out, we, we wanted to go for an amulet device with a huge disc. And even that large disc didn't cover it completely, but I mean, with this kind of imaging, we were happy that this small area uh, wouldn't represent huge risk of a thrombus, and we were happy with this kind of positioning of the device. So you can guide the, the positioning of, the devi uh, of devices with eyes. But we have learned a few things. Uh, one thing is that um, this is not the apex of the left atrial appendage. So you shouldn't say that don't advance the catheter more because you're at the tip of the, ap of the appendage, because that's not the tip of the ap appendage. The other thing is that, uh, unfortunately, this is not the diameter of the, uh, that you need for the device. This is uh, much too small normally. Um, but what, what is good about using ICE is that the positioning here is actually a good landing zone for the device. And it's a good position to measure the compression of the device and you get a good idea of whether you have placed it properly. Then there's <laughs> the thing about that all the left atrial appendages look the same on ICE. And um, that's because we are doing a two-dimensional cut through these. These are cauliflowers, chicken wings, they all look the same. And um, that's obviously a bit of a problem. And therefore, it's very important that um, you have done your homework. So you cannot use ice for left atrial appendix closure unless you have made all the measurements before the procedure. So if I were to say a patient that was not suited for... Um, for ICE guidance, it would be somebody who wasn't completely uh, examined with either TOE or CT before the procedure. So you need to do your homework. You need to do a CT, TOE, MRI to have the left atrial appendage completely mapped so you know exactly what you want to uh, put in the, the appendage. And you've probably seen these. These are all the debuggers, reconstructions that we have worked with. You know, you can be very advanced and try and look for leaks and things like that. That's the homework. And once you've done that, I think ICE is a perfect way of guiding the implantation. Then there's 3D ICE. Um, the problem with 3D ICE is that, unlike the TOE probe, you don't have a thousand crystals. You don't have a huge pipe for getting data into the computer. You only have 64 crystals, and the engineers tell me that there's no, no way you can put more than 64 crystals there. There, are, there aren't enough wires you can get through the device or through the catheter. So, so far, it's a very narrow angle that you can do three-dimensional echo on. And, and it's also cheating a bit because this is not a matrix. It's what they call a twisted array. So they take the 64 crystals and twist them slightly, and they can do three-dimensional imaging. But it's at a cost, I think. I think you get a slightly poorer 2D image. And I think this is um, too narrow. And if you think about it, the real problem with ICE is not that you can't do 3D. It's the price. And the price of these catheters is twice the, the normal catheter. So I think it's not really addressing the big problem with ICE going for 3D. Complication and problems. Uh, another reason for doing imaging, oh, doing imaging is that um, you need to see the complications. Here's uh, a vein, and there's the appendage. And here's, here's a, an amulet device obstructing the vein. Um, so you can see that that's seen from the pulmonary artery. Uh, we had another device put in. Here's a pulmonary embolism. The patient suddenly had cardiac arrest, and uh, we, this modeled appearance is all due to air bubbles in the myocardium. And the last is effusion. If you, during the procedure, you suddenly see accumulation of fluid around the appendage, you need to be aware that this could be um, effusion. And you need to put your catheter in the right ventricle, and you see this. Well, yeah, you can see the uh, effusion. So, in all, left atrial appendix closure is possible with ice, but you need to uh, have done all the preparations of uh, measuring of the, uh, the atrium before you can put it in. Thanks a lot. This was very Thank instructive. You.